Excuse me over there. Quit with that. Damn it, boy. 3 a.m. and the doctor's in. So, quick video on the brand FDC 3 and 61350. Just got through putting in the uh, tailwheel assembly uh, from Robart. I've got to install the, uh, the, the uh, servo that controls that. We had some clearance issues right here, uh, but we got all our blind nuts and everything installed and uh, finally got the clearance done. Everything's good there now. We've got one more servo that we're going to have to put up inside that little carbon plate. And uh, that's going to come back over here. We're, we're going to do the stealth. Um, I'm going to put a uh, bell crank or something in here so we can do a stealth install. So we don't have to do the push push because we don't want to have to have any wires or control horns or anything hanging out here. And it should work just fine, uh, especially since it's going to be a static model. Uh, we're still putting digital servos in it because we want them to be exact. But, uh, uh, you know, nothing mind-blowing. Just, you know, good standard, you know, servos, 5 million ounces or something. We got the wings done. Um, I am a little concerned um, the way that this thing was built. You could not flip without doing some real tricky wire work. Uh, you couldn't flip the... Excuse me over there. Quit with that. Um, you couldn't flip the servo over uh, to face the same direction uh, on either one of the flaps on this particular model. Meaning that your flaps are going to move like ailerons. So it was either do some real funky, serious uh, control wire work or, which I did start out to do and I, I changed uh, I, I changed my mind, decided to go back and we're gonna put reversers in it. Uh, the other problem is, is that we've got flaps on the mid wing and when we got, you know, flaps here on the main wing and uh, we only have a six channel radio. Uh, there's going to be a computer control in this most of the time, but there's also going to be a radio control. And, and, and those flaps on the mid and on the wing have to work together. We're not going to have a channel for each one of those servos so we can really dial that in. So everything's going to have to be done manually. And I'm just not sure that we're going to be able to get it spot on perfect. That's just going to cost us another radio with more channels and a bigger receiver. But I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve, and we'll see how uh, how that goes. Now, you know, the funny thing about this build here, being static, is that uh, the customer, uh, how you doing, Mr. J? Um, the customer wants the props to spool up, not enough to fly the plane, obviously, but just to slow spool up and a little bit, you know, he wanted them controllable. He wanted it to look like it was flying, and when I heard those words come out of his mouth, I'm thinking, you know how I am. I've got to kick it up a little bit, you know, so I'm thinking, well, if we want this thing to look like it's flying, why don't we just figure out a way to make this thing run through little routines so you can flip a switch and it'll just have what? Like a 10-minute or 5-minute or 15-minute movie, if you will, where the model starts up, spools up, Flaps down, lights on, checks, all that stuff, you know, taxi. Uh, flaps 100%, motor spool up some more, takes off, starts to fly, and gear comes up, flaps come up, you know, cruise lights go on, and uh, the strobes and all that. And uh, we're also gonna have this computer control this is the computer here. This is the little guy that uh, uh, our, our computer man built. And uh, this is uh, going to control everything from the retracts to the lights to everything that I just mentioned. 
Uh, these lights are running extremely fast right now, probably about 30 or 40 times faster than what they normally will. These are going to be changing color uh, real slow as if somebody's doing ambient lights on and off in the cabin, on and off in, you know, in the cockpit. These lights colors will also be changing. We're going to try to give the effect that, you know, cigarettes are being light, lit every once in a while. Because guess what, baby? You could smoke on a Braniff DC-3. You know, what none of this whining and crying about other people smoking in a tube next to you, right? So, <laughs> hell, I smoked in a hospital airplane. I, we've smoked everywhere. But I'm glad I don't smoke anymore. Mm -hmm. So, we are close on the deadline, yes, but we are almost close to done too, and uh, we shall make it, because that's what we do here. Uh, anyway, so, this is just a quick uh, touch-up, and uh, what's going on. Now, I'm going to go in and get me some sleep, so I'll be worth a flip tomorrow. Y'all be good. Got any questions? Got to know Joe Hobbies in Spring, Texas. Give us a call. Hey, homeboy, you ready to go to the house? Hmm? Get the mail, chump. Get the mail. Get the mail. Still got to get all these kits out. Got a bunch of really cool World, World War One stuff in here, folks, and... Uh, Large-scale software, got some really, really nice kits in there. All of those are vintage kits. Doesn't look like a lot, but it's a lot. <laughs>